The first round of the 2021 NFL Draft has concluded and what a night it was. We got to see 32 young men live out their childhood dreams of becoming professional football players and it started with, not surprisingly, Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars. We knew this was coming and we'd been talking about this since 2018 and the Jags get the best quarterback in their franchise's relatively young history. This is an A-plus pick by every definition and they have done a good job of building around him so far and are doing everything they can to ease Trevor's transition to the NFL. Two was the New York Jets and again, we knew this pick was coming so congratulations Congratulations to both Trevor and Zach Wilson and their families for being part of their careers and this is hopefully the start of long and successful careers for both guys. Three was San Francisco and we finally got the answer to all the questions and the answer is apparently Trey Lance. Now Trey threw an incredible 28 touchdowns to zero interception in his only full season starting at North Dakota State. He will fit like a glove in head coach Kyle Shanahan's system and I am glad we finally have this figured out as to who they traded up for. To me it never made sense to trade three first round picks for Mac Jones but I do want to say it was a great move for San Francisco to recognize they won't be selecting up here again for a long while and they got their guy. Great pick for John Lynch, Kyle, and the gang. Four was Kyle Pitts and to me this pick was expected and this was a great pick by Atlanta as they get an offensive weapon for 10 years as they are continuously shopping Julio Jones. I thought after three this pick was pretty much certain. 5 was Jamar Chase, and we get the reconnection of Joe Burrow and Jamar that we saw very frequently during the incredible 2019 LSU Championship run. Penny would have been a good pick, but I do think with how much Joe and Jamar will tear up the NFL, it will prove to be worth it. 6 was Jalen Waddle to the Dolphins, and after missing out on Pitts and Jamar, this wasn't a bad consolation prize by any means, but Waddles was not certainly as good of a prospect as Jamar and Kyle Pitts was, but we do get to see the reconnection between not only Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, but Tua and Jalen Waddle. Good not great pick for the Dolphins as Waddle is, again as we said, a little inferior of a prospect, but again, he should be productive and this will prove to be a good pick over the course of time, just maybe not necessarily as good of a pick with Jamar right in front of him. 7 was Penny Sewell to the Lions and they did what a good front office does, they go best player available. Now I realize saying a good productive front office and then saying the Lions is seemingly counterproductive, but this could be the start of something good with this franchise, A plus pick for Detroit. Now 8 was JC Horn and the Panthers went all defense in 2020 with every single pick and they continue to build on this defense. They gave up in a combination of years a 2, a 4, and a 6 for Sam Darnold and they are doing what they can to give him a good defense as they have good playmakers in Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, and Robbie Anderson. Solid pick for Carolina given how the board fell for them. 9 admittedly surprised me with Denver because Justin Fields was still available and the Broncos went with a top 2 corner in the draft. They have to stop Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert for the next 10 years, so this is a good way to try and stop this. A plus pick for Denver. 10 was Philadelphia trading up and after the Eagles fan base absolutely bashed Howie Roseman for last year and understandably so might I add Eagles fans, they get an absolute beast in Devontae Smith and prevent him from going to the Giants. A plus plus pick for them, knowing what was going to happen at 11. 11 and this upsets me a lot as I am a huge Justin Fields supporter, but having to play him twice a year is going to be brutal for the next decade if not longer. Incredible pick by Chicago and by general manager Ryan Pace with his job on the line. There was no tomorrow and as Fields started the slip they made their move, A plus pick by the Bears. 12 was the Cowboys and they selected Micah Parsons linebacker from Penn State. Now admittedly I'm not the biggest Parsons fan, but with playing in a defense that is built the way they are at linebacker with Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith by the way, I think this is a place where he can maximize to his fullest potential. 13 was the Chargers who had the board perfectly play out for them and they took tackle Rashawn Slater. There really isn't a lot I can say here because they get a tackle, they get a guy to protect Justin Herbert for 10 years, and best of all, they didn't have to trade up for him. I've been giving a lot and I don't necessarily mean to, but a lot of A plus picks and this certainly is one. Now the Jets traded up at 14 and they gave up two third round picks and received a four in addition to pick swaps and took a guard in Elijah Vera Tucker. Makai Becton and Elijah Vera Tucker is an incredible left side of the line and Zach Wilson will need it to speed up his decision process making at the NFL level. They had to get their guard of the future and I absolutely love this pick by the Jets. Now next was Mac Jones to the Patriots and this is what I'm going to say, it's a very fitting pick. Mac is a Patriot in every sense and Bill Belichick gets his next guy. Now I want to say, please do not place extremely unrealistic expectations on him and I will leave it at that. 16 was Arizona and they took Zayvon Collins, the linebacker from Tulsa. Zayvon is a good player and I love the pairing of him and Isaiah Simmons on this defense. They went with who they thought was the best player available, the BPA approach, and while I like Jeremiah owosu koromoa more than Zayvon, the pairing of him and Simmons in that defense with the speed each players have is going to be lethal for the next half decade. 17 was the Raiders and 
I really hate to just discredit them and demolish them, but they did a very Raiders pick here. They took a second round tackle at 17, and after they did this, ESPN flashed a graphic saying there was a 60% chance he was going to be available at pick 46, which is where they pick closely to in the second round. They pick at 48, but 46 is only two picks away. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that selection, but a C grade for Las Vegas. 18 was Miami, and I absolutely love the Jalen Phillips pick. Jalen is an incredible pass rusher, and I think he will be a tremendous player for the Dolphins. He stays in Miami from his college days, though he did initially start at UCLA. I love Miami's draft through the first round, and that's really all there is to it. Now, 19 potentially was my favorite pick in the draft. It was the football team when they took Jamin Davis from Kentucky, and I love this pick because of what it means for this defense, and here's why. We talk about offensive linemen creating holes for running backs to run through, but this will be the exact opposite for Jamin in this defense. He will shoot and split gaps in that defense, and he is, as of now, my favorite to win the Defensive Rookie of the Year. 20 was the Giants after they traded back, and the board played out for bad for them as they took Kadarius Tony. and while Tony isn't Jamar, Devontae, or Jalen, he is good in his own rights, and they get an extra one along with Percy Harvin 2.0. They're giving Daniel Jones as many weapons as possible, and when you have a quarterback entering a pivotal point in his career like Daniel is, you have to do what you can to either figure out if he is the guy, or if a guy next year will walk in and have unbelievable weapons to work with. 21 was Indy, and this was a pick I mocked in my final mock draft that was released on Wednesday night. I had Indy taking Quiddy Pay, and this is a tremendous pick for them. Indy needs a pass rush, and Quiddy is certainly one of the best in the draft, and as we said, great pick. And going up against players, I mean, not necessarily Quentin Nelson in true one-on-one, -on -one, but having the opportunity to pick a player like his brain and, you know, what NFL players are trying to do every single play and how offensive linemen combat that, I could not be more happy for Indy. 22 was Tennessee, and I mean this in a good way, but this is a very Titans pick. Remember in 2019 when they took Jeffrey Simmons, who tore his ACL in the draft process. Caleb Farley has injury concerns the way Simmons did, and at this moment in time, we hope it works out, and overall, I would say I like this pick for the Titans, as Adoree Jackson left in the free agency this offseason. 23 was Minnesota, and they traded back nearly 10 picks and acquired two extra third rounders, which will more than likely be used as ammo to move up in the second round today, or later tonight. They get a guy they were targeting all along in Christian Darasol and pick up two extra third round picks with one of them basically being a second given it is pick 66. Vikings being draft a champs, correct me if you've heard that before. 24 was Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh gets one of the most just Steel City players in the entire draft. Najee Harris is a big physical back the Steelers needed, and after James Conner left, they get their guy. Granted, an offensive lineman would not have hurt here, but having a caliber running back of Najee Harris is good for this team, and Ben needs to be able to hand the ball off to someone. They really didn't have a run game at all last year, and they kind of tried to replace a run game with a short, quick passing game to players like Deontay Johnson and Juju Smith-Schuster, and that was a big reason why Juju averaged less than 10 yards to catch. So Ben getting this guy for what we assume is the final year of his career is big. Najee finished his Alabama career with 50 touchdowns in the final two years and will be making Steelers fans very happy very soon. The gritty fans of the black and gold will fall in love with Najee and as do I love this pick. 25 was the Jags, and they pair running back Travis Etienne with his college teammate and now professional teammate in quarterback Trevor Lawrence. This was a surprising pick to me given they had James Robinson, who had over 1,200 total yards as an undrafted rookie to then basically say, thanks James, but uh, no thanks, we're good, and draft Trevor's teammate when it wasn't the biggest need to me, in a way is a head scratcher. Now, Travis isn't a bad player but to me, but it's, it's just unneeded. 26 was Greg Newsom a corner for the Browns, and I love this pick because of what he represents. Newsom is a feisty corner in a good way, and I mean this, he kind of has like a short man syndrome type mentality, and I love what he will bring to this team. Corner Greedy Williams has not worked out, who was a former second round pick, and this is a transition for Cleveland. Newsom will play opposite of Denzel Ward, and whew, what a duo this will become. Now, 27 was Rashad Bateman to the Ravens, and I made a video back in March on Bateman, breaking down his game and said something along the lines of Baltimore and Chicago, I am begging one of you guys to take him, and I am certainly glad Baltimore did. My favorite fit in the entire first round. Now, 28 was New Orleans, and they took Peyton Turner from Houston, and I didn't exactly love this pick, but the, they did lose Trey Hendrickson to free agency. I thought Aziz Ojolari was a better prospect, but if Peyton was their guy, then they went and got him while staying put. We thought the receiver run would start, but it was in fact the edge run that started at the end of the first, and hopefully Turner works out for them the way Trey Hendrickson did in 2020.
Now briefly discussing 29 through 32, and it starts with the Packers. After the drama unfolded from earlier in the day with Aaron Rodgers, I thought for sure they would try and please him and go with a receiver. Ultimately, they did not, and went corner, and I personally thought they reached with Eric Stokes. 30 was Greg Rousseau. I pick a, so I surprisingly got right in my mock on Wednesday, and if there is any place he goes to become a dominant player, it will be Buffalo. 31 was Baltimore, and I'm not a fan at all of Jason Owe, the player, but Baltimore is a tremendous organization, and if there is a place where he can succeed, Baltimore is certainly one of those places. I fully trust the Ravens organization. And lastly, Joe Tryon of the Bucks is filling a need a year early. Shaq Barrett won't play there for forever, and they won't keep this roster together forever either. He probably won't play much as a rookie, but they will gradually work him in over the course of the year, and have him in a rotation role so he will always be fresh on third downs to really get after the quarterback. Now, with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. I cannot wait for the second and third round. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about predictions for today. And uh, until next time, don't know when the next video is going to be, but until then, love you guys. Deuces. Peace.